My name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this fragmented, cutout, sliced effect for your photos. So this could work on any shape, object, or headshot. Uh, I was inspired by this kind of statue face head, but you can use whatever you want. And the first thing we have to do in order to create this is create a selection around our object. So there's many ways you can create selections, but a quick one I'm going to use is the object selection tool. Uh, you could also use the quick selection tool, but I'm going to use the object selection tool in the lasso form. And I'm just going to create a rough outline. In this case, it's going to be easy for Photoshop to figure out where those edges are because it has a plain blurred background. And you can see it creates a pretty good selection. If there's some parts that got missed, you can try to go back over them like so. Just make sure you're on add to selection mode. And if you want to just add some touch up by hand, you can grab something like your polygonal lasso tool, maybe zoom in there. I'm using the shortcut command plus to zoom in. And I can perhaps add some finishing touches here. So I'm just double clicking to close the selections and I'll use the subtract from selection mode to get rid of the points that I don't want like so. But once you generally have your selection intact, another thing you can do is go to select modify and here's a couple ways you can modify your selection. So I can smooth it by like five pixels or so if you need. But in this case, it's a pretty good rough selection and I'm just going to go to layer via copy. That's going to take that selection and copy it onto its own layer, but we still have the original photo as the background if we need. If you still need more help creating selections, I have other tutorials that go specifically into that. But once you have your selection on its own layer, now we can create our own custom background. So a cool thing we can do is go to layer, new fill layer, and we can choose a solid color or a gradient. In this case, I'm gonna use a gradient and there's a lot of cool preset gradients that come in Photoshop. Uh, like these pastels are pretty cool. Something like that is, is nice in my opinion. Or you can create a custom gradient that isn't any one of these just by double clicking that gradient and creating whatever colors you want. But I'm going to do this cool pastel. You can change the style from linear to radial or reflected. Whatever one that you want. But... I'll keep it at linear and you can switch the, the color position. But that's pretty good for this example. And this already looks kind of cool. Uh, one note I want to make is that my original photo that I used was ar already black and white. And that's kind of adding to the appeal of this, the black and white with the pop of color. If yours isn't black and white, you can always just go to image adjustments, black and white and make it black and white. I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J, just kind of so I have my original as a backup in case I mess up. But I'm going to hide that. And then I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to create a couple slices, making sure I'm working on add to selection mode. And you want to try to slice across interesting areas and you can use varying thicknesses. So a thick slice, maybe one across the eyes maybe some thin ones, just a few interesting ones. And then you can press Command T and that'll go open up the edit free transform menu. And there's a few different ways that you can choose to transform this. If I just simply push it up in one way, you can kind of push it to the right. I'll press Command Z though. There's a couple modifier keys that we can hold like Option, Shift and Command. I believe that's Alt and Windows on, on Windows. But for example, if I hold Option and Shift, it will stretch it out from the middle because we're holding Alt, so symmetrically, and Shift will only stretch it horizontally. So I can do something like this, where I kind of stretch it like that, or you can, you can simply only hold Option and scale it from all angles, and that'll even create these, these gaps where the original background color shows through. But once you've got some slices, you can press enter to confirm. You can even grab your move tool and maybe use the arrow keys to arrow up or down or to the right or left, however you want. 
But once you have everything ready, you can press Command D to deselect. And you can repeat that process maybe one or two more times doing different varying widths again. So I'm going to go through, create some slices of different widths, and then press Command T or Edit Free Transform and do something similar again. So that's just two slices there, but we've got this cool fragmented look. And you can even, if you want, turn on the background layer again if you want to fill in those gaps. That can look nice. And you can also do things like add a drop shadow or a stroke. Let's say I right click on that layer, go to blending options, and add like a drop shadow, for example, and increase the spread and the opacity and change the color to something like a bright purple or bright pink, similar to the background, change it to normal. So this is a just another kind of accent that you can do on there if you want. But from this point, you can kind of get creative with it as you like. So give it a try on photos of your own, a statue photo like this, or a shape or object. I mean, you can do it with a banana or a fruit. So really, it doesn't matter. It's this cool black and white pop of color and slice effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, my name is Justin Odisho. You can check out a bunch of others in the Photoshop playlist on my channel. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.